Hello there, this is Julie Leggett-Hart, thank you for joining me. Uh, welcome to all new subscribers, it's great having you. Right, today what I thought I'd show you is something, another project that I've been doing. Um, I'll show you where I'm up to and then I'll show you the process. Um, there we go, I don't know how well you can see these. I'll show you there. What I have done is taken some white sheeting and coloured it um, with paint really. I've used watercolour, um, some brusho, some acrylic sprays and um, coloured the, the fabric. Let it dry and then I've torn it into strips and stitched it. And uh, I decided that I would keep the little squares small and then I could mix and match. The reason I've done this is um, I've been doing some abstract mixed media work. Uh, as you know, I am a painter, but I, I love to sew as well. So this got me on to thinking, oh, right, I've got lots of white old sheets uh, that I could colour. Um, so I just used what I've got. Um, and I will show you the process when I've um, just shown you through what I've done here. I think the beauty of it is the fact that um, I've not had to think about it, I've done it very spontaneously um, and I've just followed the patterns that the paint marks have made. Um, so we've got this one, it looks like a map of the world there. Um, and this one there. This one I've followed more like a spiral sort of theme. And um, I really love doing it. It's taken me very little time at all. So that's the first set of four that I've done. And then this is another set of four that I've done as well. And these are uh, patterns are a bit, little bit more obvious on these. Uh, what I did at the beginning was just choose different cottons and threads that would match the theme kept it to simple stitches so it's mainly just a straight running stitch. I've done some with um, French knots on and some crossed uh, cross stitches. So that's the eight that I've done and I'll show you the other pieces of fabric that I've not ripped up yet. This started as one big sheet. You could of course sew it as one big sheet but I quite like the idea of all the little sheets. So that's that one quite pretty and then that one obviously completely different so what I'm going to do I'll take one of them I'm going to rip it into four so let's just get some scissors so I'm just going to halve it and rip it straighten it out of it do the same again Just even it out and pull all the strands off. Now all the little strands, the cottons and things that you cut off and pull off fabric, if you save them all, which is something I do, I'm going to do a little project with them soon. So save all your little bits of cotton that you cut off the back of your stitching, bits of um, frayed edges off fabric, if you keep them all. I think of something to do with them. Right, and there's the last little one. It's quite nice getting those frayed edges as well. I mean, what I thought I might do with these pieces is make um, a piece of artwork to, put, artwork to put on the wall. I'll mount it, uh, but I'm going to see what how I feel as I go along. So you can see there, you've got lots of different patterns caught, created by the the paint that I've put on. They're all really very pretty. Um, and what I'm going to do is just follow the patterns on the fabric. So I tend to use DMC cottons. I've got lots of different uh, textures of sewing threads. And I think I said on the last video about all these, these walls that I've got. I've got lots of these walls 
that uh, I can choose from. Uh, really, I've got quite a few. I've got all colourways there. Another little box full. Another little box full here. What I've done is I've already sected out some colours that I think will go. So I've got some purples and some yellows. I think that might be a little bit bright. A green. I thought a little bit of pinky purple would be nice as well. And that's like a mauve. That's another yellow, which is slightly lighter than that one. And this one's a very light lemon yellow, which blends in. And I've also looked at um, my DMCs, which I've got on these little cards now. Um, and I'm going to choose some of those. I quite like that one. That's quite turquoise. I'll put that one back. There are some in here. Oh, yes, I put some on the top. And I chose another yellow, another very light turquoise, and another different sort of um, textured turquoise. So I've got quite a lot of different colours there to be going on with. So I've actually threaded up a couple of the colours. I do find it's useful to get your colours when you start, then you don't, don't have so many things around you and you can just stick with the colours that you've got. Um, I've threaded up one of the walls which is this one, it's quite nice, very thin wool and I apologise, I can't tell you where they're from because I bought them from a car boot sale um, but um, I'm sure, you know, if you look around you might find something similar but these have been a godsend Right, I'm going to take this one first and I'm just going to follow and do a running stitch just around the shape and create it as I go along Of this running stitch around there and then I think what we might do is just do some vertical double cross stitches which again is very very simple stitch but decide on your stitches and the way you're going to go forward with this I mean I don't want to start embellishing them too much I don't think um, I'm not really one for stitching buttons on everything um, but you could I think it's it's all down to personal taste. Um, so I'm going to have a think about that and next time I do a little um, video or update I'll show you where I've got to with it. So I've gone around one of those shapes there. And then what I think I'll do, I'll go in there, I'll continue over the other side. And take this green up around the yellow. I'll do a little bit of threading in to make it a little bit quicker. To be honest, I think my needle is a little bit chunky. But sometimes I do choose that because of threading the eye up. Um, but if you've got a very fine needle, you can get much finer results, I think. Um, if I embroider, which is much finer, then obviously they're much, much smaller needles and finer threads. But at the moment, I'm really enjoying the slow stitch and the speed I suppose and the enjoyment from doing it. So you can see how quick it is to start working on the piece and how you can just follow the patterns that you've created um, in an abstract way. So I'll just tag that one in there and then I've got um, a turquoise DMC thread now and I think what I'll do is I'm going to follow this blue colour around here 
in the same way. There isn't an obvious shape, but I'm just going to, where the, it fades away, just follow that line. But I decided I want to leave some of the fabric blank or unstitched so that um, when I create the pattern, when I put them side by side, it'll offer a little bit of um, variety. If you don't do paint and you still want to colour some just old sheets, you know, old bits of white fabric, there's, um, you could actually use Sharpie pens or a felt tip pen to draw shapes and you could work from that and probably tea stain it as well. Um, I think one of the reasons I like the watercolours and the, the brush show and acrylics is that it, it spreads and cause, you, you get some beautiful shades that when it dries so you don't always quite know what you're going to get when you first do it you have to wait and see and um, what looks quite dark to start with suddenly lightens up and it's just so pretty and it's a good way of freeing up and um, not being too fixed on what you were doing. Um, for me it's lovely because I, I do like to paint and I do use paint obviously in um, mixed media work but um, you know watercolours are great for colouring your fabrics. What I've done is another row of stitching just around so you can see I've started working on that piece and I'll just follow on, adding in some more stitches and things. Right, okay, so I'll put that aside. Now to do, to show you the fabric, I'll just put down a bit of plastic, because I'm going to be using paint. So I'll put that on there. Um, let's get a piece of fabric. So this is just a plain piece of white sheet. I'm moving all my things out of the way so that I can show you. Okay. So there is already a little bit of purple on there because I, when I was spraying uh, yesterday, because I only did all this yesterday and stitched it last night, I got some purple spray on there. Right, so the watercolour palette I'm going to use this this is um, a Japanese set of watercolours here um, I've got them off um, eBay and they're really good these are um, Curitake so it's K-U-R-E-T-A-K-E but the colours are really vibrant um, so I'd recommend them so that's the watercolours I'm going to use Obviously I've got a colour wheel there which I often use as I go along as well. Um, I've got some water and a paintbrush. What else do I need? Um, these are my acrylic sprays. Um, brush show, which I use in my mixed media, but it's brilliant for colouring fabric. I'm going to use a water sprayer as well. Just a fine mist spray so I can spray it to go along. Right, so get my water and just wet it a bit on there. I don't want it wet through, so I suppose that you could try it by having wet wet fabric to start with. But just do this very spontaneously. Try not to think about it too much. The way I put shapes on is um I try and do opposite so I get some contrast. So if I'm thinking of a straight line, let's get a colour. We'll go for an orange. A straight line, I'll do a straight line, but then what about a curvy line? So change it up. And if you do a circle, you could do a square. And then just keep doing things on there. 
Um, let's say, so we're going to do thick. And then, so let's do thin. And carry on with the orange. Um, let's do a long wavy line. There we go. And then, because your brush has got, still got some paint on, just wet your fabric. And then the paint that you put on will start to spread. Of course, make sure you've got this um, plastic underneath so that um, you protect your surface. Right, so there we go. So we've got some nice orange on there. I thought I'd do orange because we hadn't, didn't have orange on the last one. And then, what shall we have next? So if you look on your colour wheel, so you've got orange there. You've got your orange. So if you look for your opposites, obviously all your blues are good to use. So be a nice contrast there. Or you could just use a range of colours that are warm along that side. In fact, I think I'm going to use some warm colours because I had quite a lot of blue and turquoise in, in the last one. So let's go for some red. So this will be completely different from, from the last one. I quite fancy some big swirls there. And remember, if you, you cut these big swirls up, you'll only get little swipes of red. I'll do some dots there. So this one's got a completely different feel to my last one. And I'll have a different colour red. So this is very warm. So I think we did some straight lines in this. Now I have got some on this uh, colour palette, this watercolour palette, there is some gold. So let's try that out and see how that, I'm not sure how it dries, but it's quite good to have a watercolour palette with, um, with gold on. And there's two different colours of gold there. Right, I think we need some dots up there. Let's go. There we go for there. And some dots there. Maybe we could have some. Let's take that a little bit further down. I mean, you can leave some bits of white if you like. You can get that contrast with the white. Which is absolutely fine. Right, so I've done enough of the watercolour paint. So let's choose. So I've got a yellow brush out. I have to watch because this does go everywhere. So be quite gentle with it. We do end up with sp sprayed bits everywhere. And that sort of gives it a bit more vibrancy there. Now I can't find my red one, so I'm not sure about violet on, yeah, um, sea green. Okay, let's go for a little bit of blue, just because it's, so this is giving a bit of a dotted effect, as you can see. It probably is quite hard to see just how vibrant it is on the camera. But then you can just wet that and it'll blend it in. If you... I mean, you could use acrylic inks as well. I do have some of those. I haven't used those. I've got an acrylic ink somewhere. Let's see where that is. Oh, I wanted the red one. I'm not quite sure where the red one is. Oh, there it is. So I do use acrylic um, acrylic inks as well. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of red here in there. There we go. Pop that up there. And as you know, you can 
spread that around quite nicely as you can when you do artwork on paper oh that's got very quite a lot of red there there we go i think that'll be fine right so that's that so i'm going to let that dry that's very good just need to move that out of the way Ooh, that over there to dry. Now if you haven't got um, this one I quickly did a little square of um, fabric and um, I just used a little bit of watercolour on it and then just used um, a felt pen just a thick black marker and um, some sharpie pens so you could do that that would be very effective and, and stitch between that so if you just use one colour of watercolour and then use some sharpie pens just choose a couple of colours um, I think that would be effective so I'll, I'll do that next time okay so thank you for watching um, hope you've enjoyed that and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time with a catch-up of how it's going okay thank you